Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the Red Zone podcast episode 2. This is your host Fletch speaking and last week's episode I thought for our first episode was pretty okay. I thought there was um, a lot of room for improvement obviously but this is a, a work in progress kind of podcast so fingers crossed like it will continue to get better in the future. Um, last week we talked about various uh, topics to do with Liverpool that happened that week, mainly the Shakiri deal, uh, Lovren, and the goalkeeping situation. And conveniently, it was like not even twenty four hours after the recording or upload of the podcast. I don't remember which one. The goalkeeping situation moved at high speed because. Alison Becker, formerly of Roma, uh, signed for Liverpool. And I didn't think, at the time of recording, I think I mentioned this, that I didn't think Liverpool would sign a goalkeeper. And I did. I thought we would give Carrius another chance. Obviously, 24 hours later, we, we are in talks with signing Alisson. And within the next 48 to 24 to 48 hours... Alison Becker signed to Liverpool for a record fee for a goalkeeper of £67 million. Incredible to think that we would sign a goalkeeper. Incredible to think that we would sign a, a goalkeeper of Becker's quality. Uh, he's 25 years old. He's Brazilian. Um, and he comes with a lot, with a, with a brilliant rep- reputation and a brilliant record. He's got a great save success rate he's one of the top goalkeepers in Europe um, it's exciting it is really exciting because finally we may have found our most reliable goalkeeper since the Pepe Reina days um, obviously Mignolet hasn't quite worked out uh, Karius hasn't worked out so it's great to finally say we have got a goalkeeper of high quality fingers crossed like this actually goes well fingers crossed this doesn't end up being another one of these things where and a player comes into the club with a good reputation a good record and then puts on a Liverpool shirt and then completely forgets how to play as a goalkeeper um, fingers crossed that doesn't happen I'm sh- pretty sure it won't I'm pretty sure he will build up a good defense alongside uh obviously his his well his usual defense which will probably be Trent Alexander Arnold, Andrew Robertson, Virgil van Dijk and Dejan Lovren. If they can get a good communication going at the back, there's no reason as to why Liverpool can't build a strong defense for next season. What does this mean for the for going forward for the other goalkeepers that are there? Well, Danny Ward obviously left for Leicester. Left, left. Ah, yeah, say it again. Danny Ward left for twelve million. Um, he's going to Leicester. Um, that is a good move for Leicester, I think. A good move for Ward as well, and it's a pretty good deal, twelve million for Ward, considering uh the today's transfer market and for a goalkeeper who. Hasn't really had a chance at Liverpool. I mentioned last week that he hasn't quite had the chances that both Carrius and Mignolet have had over their time at Liverpool. Um, so it's a good deal for both clubs. What, if that means that Leicester are going to be selling Kasper Schmeichel and Ward's sort of like his replacement, or Ward's going to be uh, number two to the second goalkeeper that they currently have, I'm not sure. That remains to be seen. Um... But with Allison signing, Ward was never going to get a chance. Even though like last week, before Allison signed, it was there was talk of Ward possibly getting his chance above Carriers and Mignolet for next season. So, we're reading to what he will, but it's a very good signing, uh, a very good sell for Liverpool. Um, Twelve million pounds, nothing. Uh, not, it's not bad at all, considering that that's. Pretty much, uh, most of the Shakiri deal recaptured from that one uh, sell. So pretty good. Um, elsewhere, Carius, Lois Carius has been 
reportedly considering his future at Liverpool following the Allison deal. Um, allegedly, he wasn't told that Allison was going to be signing for Liverpool until it happened. Um, and he, obviously, his week's pretty bad already, considering the fact that he made a complete and utter mess in the uh, Borussia Dortmund friendly Liverpool played. And from there, he kind of got more abuse, even from his own fans. I do feel sorry for him. I genuinely do. I think the... I, I don't think it's like the majority of the fan base. I think the majority of the fan base are sort of like... They're tired of him messing up, but they're not going to abuse him because there's no point in that. It's ridiculous to abuse someone. Um, to call out their family, call out who they are. Ridiculous to do any of that over a football game, but... There's a small minority that have gone that far, even in pre-season. They're tired of the mistakes. They're tired of everything, even in a pre-season friendly game. Um, and it led to like a heartfelt kind of statement on uh, his Instagram, I think it was. Uh, where he basically called out the fans and just said, yeah, I'm human. Um, and I feel sorry for you that you feel the need to call me out and threaten me and stuff. So, I genuinely do feel sorry for him in that respect. And I really... I think what's best for him now is he gets taken completely out of the firing line at Liverpool. I think what's best for him now is he goes on to go on a loan somewhere, maybe back to Germany. Where he can possibly build up his confidence a little bit. Um... Main label then come in as number two, and maybe next season look to maybe bring him back into the fold if, if obviously things work out on his loan move. I think right now his mentality is shot to pieces, his uh, confidence is in tatters. He needs to build that back up again, and I think the only way for him to do that is to go out on loan because right now at Liverpool he's completely in the firing line and when he does play everyone's going to be waiting and an, waiting in anticipation of a complete and utter howler that he's going to make and it's not right that people should think that it's not right that he should have that worry in the back of his head but with, with his current mental state he's not ready for first team Alisson coming in kind of bear, kind of uh, covers that aspect of it but if he wants to have some any kind of future at Liverpool going out on loan might be the best way for him because otherwise his future is gone completely as for Minnelay his future is unclear but thanks to Ward being sold and Carius's current state he might become the number two to Alisson um, otherwise if he isn't, and, and Klopp's going to give uh, Carriers another chance to shine, then he'll either become the third choice goalkeeper for this season, or he will leave. Allegedly, Barcelona were interested in middle layers, if you can believe that. Barcelona. Um, I don't know what to make of that, to be honest. I don't know whether that was, I think that was just all paper talk, but there could be an element of truth in it, if Barcelona are prepared to just want some sort of backup goalkeeper that's not really going to play that often. Let's face it, Mingley's going to have as much chance of getting into the Barcelona lineup as he is going to get into the Liverpool lineup currently, should Carrius obviously remain as number two goalkeeper. But uh, his future is definitely unclear. Um, and with his future being unclear, it's just basically now a case of who, like what to do with Carrius and Mingley. Allison, we know definitely is going to be the number two goalkeeper. Uh, number two, number one goalkeeper. Carrius, like I said, should be loaned out. If I was Jurgen Klopp, I'd be looking at getting him loaned out to build up his confidence again. But as for Mingley. I I don't know. Should be number two if Carries goes out on loan, but 
He wanna he'll wanna play games. He'll want to be the be starter, uh, starting in many games. But when you spend sixty seven million on a player, you just know he's gonna be starting. That's just how it goes in football now. The big players always have to start, and Mingley's had plenty of chances, in my opinion, to kind of cement his role before we signed Allison. Flying over. Um, so yeah, it's um, it's just a case of uh, just finding what to do with these two underperforming, shot of confidence goalkeepers. I mentioned Ward, and I mentioned the uncertain future of goalkeepers. Um, there's a, there's talk of a summer clear out. Um, this transfer window it's to recapture some of the some of the millions that have been um, that have been spent already we spent like a, a, I think of like 171 million pounds on players we've bought in the four players of Kate of Nabi Keita Fabinho Jordan Shakiri, and of course Allison. and they've cost a lot of money and now we're looking to recapture some of that back this talk of getting rid of of several players and hopefully bringing in back a uh, hundred odd million. There's talk of selling Origi, Ings, Markovic, and uh, Gruwich, uh, and possibly Sheyoho, uh, and maybe one or two other youngsters as well, just to help boost the uh, the uh, recapture of some money. I think out of them players, like, Origi and Markovic definitely need to go. For me, Origi has only shown flashes of what he can do. He's been very inconsistent. Uh, his loan move, from what I can tell, didn't quite work out last season. And already in pre-season, he seems to not be quite up to scratch. Um... And if and the look, Liverpool are said to be looking at getting twenty seven million pound back for Origi, which would be amazing considering the ten million that we spent on him to get him in the first place. Uh, so that would be pretty good if we could get that kind of money. Um, there's rumored to be some interest, but maybe teams are put off by the price tag a little. Um, but it, but up to me, I think he definitely needs to go. Um, Danny Ings. I feel really sorry for Ings because he came in and he looked very good at Burnley. He came into the Premier League, he looked very good at Burnley. And he does have a, like a Jurgen Klopp-esque element to his game where he will chase down lost causes and he will press from the front and he will just tirelessly run for 90-odd minutes. Injuries haven't been too kind to him. He's fallen victim to... A couple of massive injuries that have kept him out for a cup for the couple of years that he has been at Liverpool, um, and I feel and I genuinely feel sorry for him in that respect. I think Liverpool will be willing to keep him on as to add depth to their squad, um, but with Daniel Sturridge seemingly back in favour of Jurgen Klopp over the over the preseason, I believe that Ings may want to start looking at possibly leaving Liverpool because of the limited uh, game time that he may receive because obviously Firmino is going to be ahead of him, Sturridge is going to be ahead of him and the progression of Dominic Solanke as well who I think will play more and more as the seasons go on to hopefully uh, fulfil his potential. I think it may be best for Ings to start looking at possibly a new club. Liverpool are said to be looking at receiving 20 million for the striker. Um, again, it's it's a pretty good fee to receive if they can get it. There's plenty of interest I've I've been hearing from uh, even like a return to Burnley might be on the cards for him, and I would love him to return to Burnley because he had such a good thing going there, especially alongside Sam Bokes. So it will be good for him to to return there. It would be good for him to just get out and play some football because he is a good player. 
It's just his career has been injury hit throughout, and they've not been the little injuries that only take a few weeks. They've been massive injuries that have taken months and even years of his career. Uh, Lazar Markovic, he's someone that came in as a very, very big prospect for the future um, and just hasn't lived up to it at all. He hasn't taken to the Premier League at all. He hasn't. He's been out on loan a couple of times. Like, he just hasn't. He just hasn't rose to the occasion. He hasn't lived up to his price tag, his potential. They've been looking to get a shot of him for now a couple of seasons. He just hasn't uh, lived up to any expectation whatsoever. Problem is, even though there's rumoured interest, I just think the price tag's a little bit putting off. Liverpool looking to receive £7 million at the very least this time around, so I've heard. Um, and I don't know, it just seems like no one wants to take him because of the price tag. It's. It just seems like his contract will run down at Liverpool and he'll be released on a free contract and then free for anyone to pick up. Which is sad for someone who came in with such potential, but due to... Due to not taking any chances that he's received, just hasn't worked out for him. Um, Marco Guric, there is potential with this guy. There is a lot of potential for this this central midfielder. The only unfortunate thing for him is, is that his age currently is possibly a factor. Even though I genuinely don't believe age should be a factor. I think if you're good enough to play, you're good enough. But uh, the inclusion or the addition of both Keita and Fabinho in his role will sort of hold his, well, sort of hold back his potential uh, playing time. Uh, it's just sad because, like I say, this guy, this guy seems pretty good. I think I think he's out on loan this season. Um, but that uh, well, I think Liverpool are looking more to loan this guy this season than uh, sell him. But uh, but if the right fee is there, then potentially selling him is the way to go forward. It seems other youngsters uh, are possibly going to be joining them but they'll most likely go out on loan unless they can get a fee that's good enough i don't mind the whole summer clear out thing i think there is a uh, there is some dead wood still there from like the brendan rogers era that needs to be sorted it's also a good way of recapturing some of the money spent already this summer which is good i just think i just think that maybe Recapture some of this money. Maybe one or two more players as well that need to be sold. And other than that, I'd probably say the summer looks more likely done. As much as I hate to say, I still think Liverpool need a number 10. Possibly another striker just in case Sturridge gets injured. Even though he... Because Sturridge has seemed to jump up the pecking order of strikers. He seems to be behind Firmino now as the backup for him but one in one Daniel Sturridge injury away and you've got Dominic Solanke there who I still have full faith in that he will reach his potential and he will become a great striker a great English striker but last season wasn't a great start for him plenty of games and only one goal in the Premier League or plenty of substitute appearances and only one Premier League goal it doesn't quite go right for him and he was a little bit unlucky I'll give him that because he showed some good uh, some good flashes of what he can do and he was a bit unlucky with certain situations but at the end of the day one Daniel Sturridge injury a Firmino injury and you're left with Solanke playing up top on his own for a few weeks or a few months it doesn't quite go go well for that in that respect but a number 10 a striker and then i would be done barring any sort of out of their bargain 
that you just can't refuse. But it doesn't seem like that way. It doesn't seem like that's going to be the case. It seems like right now, outgoings are going to be filling up the remainder of this transfer market for Liverpool. And it, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit unfortunate. I would love to have um, see, seen one or two new faces come in before the transfer market close. Sorry, closes but that's just seemingly the way it is right now and I mentioned Sturridge there I mentioned Sturridge and I mentioned him last week I said that uh, potentially he could either leave Liverpool if he wants to pursue first team football or he could stay and stay as long as he's going to know that he's going to be a part time player well it seems he's going to stay and be a part-time player. Klopp has uh, said this week that he aims to keep Sturridge at the club and therefore he's jumped up the pecking order behind Firmino. Possibly in a slightly deeper role. Um, I mentioned it last week that in pre-season Klopp's been playing Sturridge in a slightly deeper role. I think that's just because this in, in a slightly deeper role, rather than a striker, he's sort of... Um, he sort of doesn't have to press as much. He has to press a little bit, of course. That's the whole aim of Klopp's philosophy. But he doesn't have to press as much in this deeper role, which means that he doesn't have to do much running, and therefore he doesn't have to lead the charge, so to speak. And therefore, it could also reduce the risk of injuries with him not having to run around as much. Um... So a slightly deeper role could be good for him in both um, prolonging his career and keeping away from injuries and also could be nice to, to fill in that little gap should we not want to spend money on a number 10 or, or resurrect the Fik the Nabo Fakir deal. 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 Um, but this week Klopp's praised his fitness, Klopp's praised the... Uh, physical shape that he's in um, it seems as though he is going to stay at Liverpool it does seem like he's going to uh, play some part in Liverpool's season and I'm happy for him in that respect I still love him for the way that for the uh, season in which him and Suarez helped Liverpool to a great finish um, so close to winning that league a few seasons ago I still love him for that. He'll always, I always like him as a footballer. I like him as a player. Um, just, again, a bit like Ings. His career at Liverpool has been a bit stop-start with injuries. Just so many problems with that. It's just been terribly unfortunate for him. But, yeah, hopefully with this new role... Um, and hopefully, if he can stay off the injury table for some time, he could have a good season this year. And he could come back to the Daniel Sturridge that we all know and love. And um, just have a good goal-scoring season, I hope. Just get back to how it was before. Maybe him and Firmino can, work, can uh, create something special uh, as, as a strike force. I already know that he's got a good uh, a good friendship building with Nabi Keita. And Keita, by the way, looks absolutely incredible. Him and, him and Fabinho look great together. And they look great apart. And they look great with everyone else. And I really, really cannot wait for the new season. Of course, if they don't want to spend money on number 10, they can always go with Shakiri as the number 10. I don't really I see a problem with that at all. Um, I don't think they will. I think they'll keep Sh uh, Shakiri as uh, a backup to one of the wingers, but uh, it's still an option to have. It's still a pretty good option. Um, but yeah, that's basically all that's happened this week. Um, oh, oh there was the uh, Liverpool Manchester City friendly last night in um, in America. Ended up 2-1 to the Reds with Manane and Salah both scoring after coming on from the bench in their first preseason back. 
Salah scored within 52 seconds of coming on, so fingers crossed he's back up and running for the new season. Same with Mane as well, who scored from the penalty spot very late on. Um, I don't know how much you can really tell from pre-season, it's just fitness boosters in it. Um, but yes, 15 days and counting till the new Premier League season, and I for one cannot wait for it at all. This is going to be a great season, not just for Liverpool, but for every team involved. It's going to be a close season, I think. I think it's going to be one of the best seasons going. And I seriously cannot wait for it to begin, get started. It's going to be a cracker. I can assure you that. Okay, guys. That concludes episode two of the Red Zone podcast. Sorry it wasn't that long, but not really that much to talk about with um, only a few main stories dominating the uh, Liverpool news so to speak uh, so yeah if you have any comments on any of the issues that I, or any of the stories that I've been talking about here maybe what was your opinion on the whole Alisson deal um, what's your opinion on some various players outgoing, leaving Anfield this summer? And what do you think of uh, Daniel Sturridge resurrecting his career at Liverpool? I would love to know your comments on any of these stories or any of the stories that I may have missed even. Love to hear on that. Um, else, other than that, if you hit the like button on the way out, that would be really appreciated. That's if you like the video, of course. Um, subscribe if you're new, subscribe if you want to see more content like this, that'd be great as well. Other than that guys, thanks very much for listening. I've been Fletch, this has been the Red Zone Podcast, and I will see you in the next episode.